if I got hit by a bus tomorrow, this is the one idea that I would want to leave behind. So like one day I was walking home from school and I heard the radio off in the distance. And as I got closer, it was coming from above, which was a strange kind of orientation. And I look up and we had a two-story house. And my mom, who's tiny, is perched on the top of the two-story house, like very precariously. And when you're little and you're short, it just, everything is amplified. And I was like, mom, I was like, is everything okay? Like, what are you doing up there? And in her very Jersey accent, she's like, uh, Re, I'm fine. You know, the, the roof had a leak in it. I called the roofer. He said, it's gonna be at least 500 bucks. I said, screw that. I went into the garage. There was extra asphalt. I'm gonna fix it. And I was just like, okay, you know, that's mom. Another time I came home and I heard the radio like blaring from the back of the house. So I walked to the back of the house and I saw the bathroom. It was like the door was cracked open. And as I pushed the door open, the whole room was filled with dust particles. There was like pipe sticking out of the wall. It looked like a bomb went off. And I'm like, mom, what are you doing? Like, is everything okay? And she said, you know, the tiles had cracks in them and I didn't want the bathroom to get moldy. So I'm retiling the bathroom. Now, Tom, you gotta get, this again is the 1980s. My mom is high school educated. This was pre-internet, pre-YouTube, pre-Google. I never knew like where I would find my mom or what I'd find her doing, but that radio was always my clue. So one day, it was in the fall and in New Jersey, you know, the um, daylight savings had already passed, so it was dark and it was spooky. And I went home and it was totally silent. And the house was dark, which is very odd for my family. So I walk in and I had that pit in my stomach that you have when you're nervous that something's wrong. And I start walking around the house and I didn't know where my mom was. And I felt like something bad had happened. And then all of a sudden I heard these tiny clicks and clacks and I followed the sound to the kitchen and I saw my mom hunched over the kitchen table. It was like an operating room. She had like electrical tape and screwdrivers and in a dozen or so little pieces, her Tropicana orange was completely dismantled. And I was like, mom, that's your little radio. What happened? Are you okay? Is it broken? And she said, oh, it's fine. You know, the antenna was off and the dial was um, not working right. So I'm fixing it. And that was the first time I thought to ask the question that I really needed to ask all along, which was, how do you know how to do so many different things that you've never done before, yet no one's showing you how to do them? And she like put down her screwdriver and she cocked her head and she looked at me and she's like, what are you talking about? It's not that big of a deal. Nothing in life is that complicated. You can do anything you set your mind to. If you roll up your sleeves, you get in there and you do it. Everything is figure outable. And I was like, <laughs> like just in that moment. And I will tell you this. I don't know, Tom, for sure, whether she said those three words or that's what my childhood brain heard and translated because you know how we do that kind of thing. But that phrase got embedded in my soul on such a deep level. And I just said it over and over again, like from continuing to get rejected on like sports teams and cheerleading and going again and again, and like getting out of an abusive relationship to getting every part-time job I've ever gotten, every full-time job I've ever gotten, building the entire business. Like I still use that phrase every single day. I realized, as I became an adult, it's been the single biggest driving force of my life.